Welcome back to the Make or Break shop. This week we're gonna talk about something a little bit different. I have been working on, so I've been working on this play kitchen and one of the big processes is I've been using Fusion 360 to model it and I've actually gotten a lot of questions on why aren't you using SketchUp? Why are you using Fusion? So I wanna show you guys four different ways on how Fusion works better than SketchUp and ways you can incorporate it in your furniture builds. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we are at my computer and I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of those four things. The first one we're gonna start off with is parametric design. Basically, this means that you can adjust the dimensions after you've built the model. So I'm gonna give you guys some examples of this, but in SketchUp, you would have to go all the way back to the part remake it. So I wanted to show you guys this. So this is the play kitchen, uh, just in the modeling environment. And this one's gonna be really complicated, so we'll go to a simple example here in a sec. But uh, you can see if you go to modify and then change parameters, um, these are all the different parameters that I have set for this model. So these are things that I can change um, as I go. And I wanna give you one easy example because uh, it slows down a little bit when I change some of them because it has to do a lot of math. But you can see everything from the plywood thickness, so I'm using three quarter inch. If for some reason I change that to half inch, um, all of these three quarter inch plywood pieces would change. So what's cool about this is these are formulas, so you can base dimensions off of other dimensions, and that's kind of how you build things together. For instance, so the overall width is the stove width times three, these are equal units, um, plus the fridge width. So that gives me the overall width is of uh, 63 inches. And then I'm able to base uh, things off of that. You may be wondering, okay, that's great, but how does that actually apply to the model? So a really easy one for me to change is the thickness of the countertop. So you can change what the dimensions are called right here uh, when you go in and you add a new one. Uh, so this is uh, three quarters of an inch. And so you guys are gonna see this is gonna change. Let's just do this to a big number so you can see it. If I change that to three, this switches to three inches, but it still stays constrained to the area. Um, and it just comes out a little bit with how I have it built. All right, so I wanna give you a really simple example of this. Uh, instead of this kitchen, uh, there's a lot of pieces, a lot of components that might be a little overwhelming. So let's jump into something that's always fun. That is a Lego brick. Again, if we go to modify, we go to materials or parameters, you can see the different parameters. And what's nice about this is you can have these be unitless. So I wanted to create a Lego and define how many of these I wanted on each one. I just forgot the name. I'm sure someone will tell me. But let's say I just wanted to have a two by two Lego. Put that in, changes to a two by two. Or let's make a six by two. Same thing happens. And I just have this set up wrong. That's why it's not showing up. The MOB isn't showing up right here. So you can see that the length is coming from the length, which I typed in up here, times a Lego unit. And a Lego unit is eight millimeters. That is basically what one of these little stubs is. Uh, and then minus uh, the clearance, which is 0.02 inches. And that is how it is defined. And what's cool is that you can go back in time to uh, different things that you did. So to see how I actually made the number is, uh, so I went back to when I extruded a SketchUp and you can see that this is uh, doing a square design and this is based off of the length. So that's how it changes each time. And then kind of like SketchUp, um, you just extrude these up and it gives you those top pieces. All right, so I wanna give you one more example. This is an end table that I built for my daughter. There's a link right there if you wanna check it out. So this one is a little bit simpler, um, but I wanna change one dimension so you guys can see. Um, we're gonna change the rail height. And the rail height is basically how big this is right here. So kind of from that top, from the bottom um, of the rail to the top. So I'm gonna change this to something big so you can see a difference. Uh, we're gonna change it to 15. This is gonna be a little bit ridiculous. But what's cool about it is it scales all the dimensions so you don't have to go back in and rebuild it. So the second reason I pick Fusion over SketchUp is the sculpting modeling environment. So you can traditionally model, uh, it's very rigid. A lot of like woodworking projects you're gonna do there. But if you wanna get into more organic shapes, um, you really can't do that as much in SketchUp, but you can in Fusion. So this was gonna be a front of a stereo. And uh, you can actually see this picture. Um, I had Kirby Meets Audio on, and he uses a similar process to get the really cool, um, these organic shapes on the front of his um, stereos. But, so the way this works is, if I zoom it back, and uh, again, this is the timeline, so you can kind of go back in time um, to when you're creating it, and then edit. 
this drops you into uh, this form environment. And what's cool is then you can modify and then everything moves organically. And this is stuff you really can't do in SketchUp. This is all the polygon stuff. People use this to make some pretty cool things. So there are some sites out there that you can check out models as well as download models. So uh, I was pulling this one up. This is a Stormtrooper helmet. And uh, there's just all kinds of really cool, I was just searching for helmets because it's a really good example because um, you'll start with like a circle form and pull things out. Um, but just all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, that you can model inside of Fusion uh, that you wouldn't be able to inside of SketchUp. And that leads me to the third area, and that is the fact that you can export these files as an STL uh, to send to a 3D printer. Um, so you can make something in here and create it in real life. Or in my case, what I've been doing is I'll create those STLs. You can actually generate G code, uh, which is what you use to send to a CNC and cut it out. So this is a knob that I have CNC'd out, and you can see it actually cnc right now. Um, but I generated the G code for this 3D shape. This is something you definitely can't do in SketchUp. And even if you're using like Easel or VCarve for your CNC, um, a lot of times those are really just 2D. In this case, this is the manufacturing environment and you drop into here and this is the CNC setup. You can simulate it. So um, you can bring in um, whatever tool you want, whatever uh, bit that you want, and you create the different paths. It takes a little bit to learn and I'll do a video on kind of my process on how I've done it, uh, but you can create multiple paths, then you export those paths to uh, Easel or the CNC. And what's nice is you can simulate it, so you can see, if I speed it up, which is pretty much the real process uh, on the CNC. And so um, from this, like I said, you can export this as a uh, G-code. So there's this post-process module, then you can download the post-processor for Easel, in my case is what I use and then you export it out and it gives you G code. And that looks like, uh, this is Easel. So this is the free software uh, that I use for my XCarve, but you can import that G code uh, right there. And this is pretty much that exact same thing that you were just watching. And then you just send it to the CNC. And last but not least, this was the feature that brought me to Fusion to start out. It's the fact that it can render your models and actually make them look pretty photorealistic. This is super helpful if you guys are doing client work. Um, you can actually model it up and send it to them so they can visually see what's going to look like uh, a lot better than just like a sketch on a sheet of paper. On here, if we go into the render environment, and uh, you can see that I've got this set up. You can apply different textures. Um, so you can select your appearances. So maybe I want the doors to be steel on the front and um, it's going to take that and it's gonna render that as steel. So you can actually see it's pretty reflective now. So there's a bunch of different um, textures that you can bring in and you can actually bring in environments. So you can download them. And so I wanna show you a couple examples of the actual renders. So these are various renders of the kitchen that I've done and it was really easy to kind of get an idea of what this thing was finally gonna look like. Um, I brought in this wallpaper texture. I had to tile it because it wasn't big enough. Um, the actual build, it will not be like that, but you can kind of get an idea for how it works. So this is uh, just your kind of standard farmhouse table. I built this a couple times for, for friends and uh, you go into the render. And again, you can see, you can change all different types of stuff. So these are just various renders of that table. And uh, what's nice about this is you can set up a bunch of different things. So if you want it super skewed, uh, you can change your um, focal length. So say you want it really exaggerated, um, you can drop that down to a really wide angle lens, like a 10 millimeter, and then it's just like insane. Or you can keep it kind of standard at your 50. Uh, which is kind of like the human eye. And then you can adjust your exposure. You can do depth of field. So if you really want that blurry background, uh, you can, uh, this little green dot is the focus point. So you can change that around and then uh, you can render it. And then to render, all you do is you go up to render. Uh, this is your settings. You can use a local render or a cloud renderer. Usually the local goes a little bit faster and that's gonna give you a file or you can just do it straight up in the canvas to get an idea if that's what you're gonna look like. So hit the canvas and it's going to start rendering and it's going to do uh, different iterations and it's gonna do more and more iterations uh, to track all the light and shadows and everything. And so uh, this usually takes, I don't know, a couple minutes to get to the, I guess the excellent point, uh, which is where for the most part, you kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. So 
That's number four. So it is raining. So what about you? Do you use Fusion 360? It is free if you guys did not know, just like SketchUp. Leave a comment below on a reason why you go either way. So SketchUp or Fusion 360. And so the rest of you make sure and check that out. Also, here are the real life builds of those models that I made. Um, you can check those out. And until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.